Chairman, members of the board, my name is Andrew Garcia, Chief Financial Officer from Brownsville PNB. I will be going over the financial performance report as of June. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to go over some uh, bottom line highlights here. Um, you know, line 7, gross revenues, uh, year to date, uh, 125,849,000. Uh, adjusted gross revenues, uh, 86,502,000 after banking out fuel and wholesale uh, Expenses and southmost contributions. Uh, total requirements 60.2 million, uh, leaving a balance of 23,145,93, which has been utilized to, to fund uh, the city transfer 5,548,186, leaving 17,592,407 for internal uses, of which 11,539,872 on line 25 there has been applied to CIP uh, project funding, leaving a balance of uh, two surplus of 6,052,000. Uh, we have uh, favorable variances in these graphs uh, for adjusted gross revenues, fuel, and O&M. On the consumption side, uh, electric seems to be trending uh, in line with 2011 levels. Uh, we are uh, approximately uh, 1 point, I mean 2.3 percent above 2011 levels. On the water side, we are, however, uh, below 2011, 2011 levels by 1.7 percent. You'll see the, the purple uh, uh, trend here at the 682 compared to 760. Same with the uh, wastewater. We are 1.8 percent below 2011 levels. Uh, for the month of, of June, we had uh, 459 million gallons versus 503 in 2011. Our electric um, rates, residential rates for the average 1,000 kWh user continue to be the lowest uh, in the area at uh, 84.83 for the month of June. Uh, the, the red line here uh, marks the, uh, uh, the comparison between the, the various utilities, various IOUs there. And for the 12 months, uh, we were at $90.03. Part of this is attributable, attributable to our low uh, fuel factor, which has remained at 3.2 cents for the last three months. Compared to other municipal uh, utilities, uh, same story here at 84, 83. We are the lowest uh, compared to, to the normal uh, uh, other municipals that we compare ourselves to, both on the uh, for the month of June and the 12-month rolling uh, price of 90.03. Uh, the closest one on the 12 months is, is San Marcos there, and uh, on the monthly uh, was was Cape Carville at 85. That concludes my financial presentation. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board. How are you? I spoke with Mr. Hernandez. He gave us a heads up. Great. And we made this presentation to the Finance Committee in June. We just wanted to share the rest with the, the report with the, the rest of the board. 
Thank you. Okay, customer activity for the year 2011 for total transactions combined uh, CSR activity that would be walk in and calls for 309,704 transactions. The IVR was 262,561 for combined of 572,000. The presentation really is revolving around the payment arrangement side of the activity that we have. Uh, combined activity for payment arrangement requests was 32% of our business. 182,900 payment arrangement requests came through in that time period. Of those requests, 85,184 were actually issued with a do dollar value of $19 of those, 48,000 were defaulted. 57% of our customers didn't keep their payment arrangements as they had made them. Of year to date, up to June, new fiscal year, we're following the same trend. 57% of the payment arrangements that we've made uh, have also been defaulted. So what we're trying to do is tighten up and, and require customers to make, keep their payment arrangements in order to continue to get new payment arrangements so that we can improve our collection stream. Of the 60,235 customer accounts that we had last year, fiscal year in, 16,781 actually made payment arrangements, 28% of our customers. And uh, they used the payment arrangements to avoid disconnection. Of those 16,700 customers, 50% of them have made more than four payment arrangements in the year. And as you can tell, a lot of them are not being kept. So there are just repeats. And it clogs up the whole system, slows down the process. So payments, uh, according to the city ordinance, uh, payments are due when the bills are issued and they're considered late after 15 days according to the ordinance and we should have penalize 6%. And through our billing process, we've uh, increased that to 21 days before the penalty is actually applied. So customers are given a lot of um, extra uh, consideration. And we have some structure for payment arrangements, how we set them up, they're all in your packets. Basically, we, we try to keep the customers to within a two bill extension. They have one bill that can be passed due and then a new bill that's pending. Um, it's on special occasions or special situations where it might get extended beyond that. We've opened up options for customers to email requests. They can request the payment arrangement over the IVR through the phone and in person. We want to do some more to automate that process. And here's a classification of certain situations that we try not to make any arrangements for. The plan that we'd like to take uh, to the board and, and just to make you all aware of it is that we want to automate the payment arrangement process so that the IVR will actually run, the, run a whole set of queries and issue the payment arrangement and it won't have to be reviewed by a CSR. Currently, the CSRs have to review and approve all of the payment arrangements coming in. It would standardize the decision process and reduce the process time that it takes to review the account. It, the system would actually be doing all of this. So we're, we're hoping that we can get that going. This is the uh, layout, a diagram of the process that the automation will undertake. Some of the things that the CSRs are looking at, and this will actually happen in seconds instead of five minutes or 10 minutes, depends on the whole customer interaction. And this just goes to, we, we are looking at previous balances when the customers call in to ask for or come in, what they owe, how many arrangements they've made, how many have been kept and so on before we decide on making them. And of course, the uncollectibles, they go into write-off. This is a history of the last five years. 
how much is recovered and then the net losses and late charges help to offset those write-offs. Do y'all have any questions? Um, not really. Yeah, National Valley doesn't. AEP doesn't. Um, well, they'll make one, and if you break it, they won't make another one. And you make payment arrangements for both residential and commercial. That's what that first uh, um, first thing is. I'm going to report back to you what you paid for last year. Um, first of all, the uh, the signature series is uh, committed to making a difference in the cultural life of the Lower Rio Grande Valley by inviting world class uh, performing artists to perform in our spectacular arts center. And uh, in order to do that, to get the highest quality of performers in a one of the poorest cities in America, we have uh, to rely heavily on sponsorships and grants and support from the university in order to bridge that gap. And uh, PUB helped us last year. I'm, uh, I'm here first and foremost to thank you for that. Uh, what you have in that first sheet is a list of our educational outreach uh, activities from last year, which is the, uh, the portion of the series that you sponsored specifically. Uh, we did that, I don't know if you recall, but uh, at the time that uh, I came to visit with you last year, we had already obtained sponsors for all of our shows, and so I suggested that as kind of a fallback position, well, why don't you sponsor our outreach? And it turned out to be the very best sponsorship you could have had. Um, PUB was acknowledged publicly from the stage at all nine of our events when I was able to say that you sponsored the uh, educational outreach activity that happened earlier that day. Over 3,000 students took part in those activities, and uh, um, it ended up being a, a very, very good representation of PUB for uh, uh, for that. Uh, and I'm uh, I'm going to suggest that uh, you would consider doing the exact same thing again. Uh, what you have in the next sheet, the one that uh, has your logo at the bottom, this is unofficial, so don't worry, I'm not putting this out just yet. Uh, but those are our outreach activities for this year. Um, you can see all of our shows in the glossy brochure I gave you, um, but the, uh, the ones that have a special outreach component are listed separately on that, um, the sheet that's listed with, uh, I think it says down the side, 2012-2013 uh, outreach shows. And, uh, um, they include a uh, number of uh, matinee performances, which we schedule at 1 o'clock so that uh, schools can bring uh, busloads of children to see it. And then uh, in several cases, cases um, master class performances by uh, uh, performers that are masters of their instrument that uh, we design primarily for students, public school and university students who are uh, interested in music or in one case in dance, uh, in the case of Ragamala. Um, these are uh, um, highly visible, and we, we again would uh, would do the same thing as we did last year. The, the sponsor for that portion of our shows would be acknowledged at all of the events. Uh, you get the same uh, full page ad in our program for all nine shows, uh, and you would get the full benefits of uh, sponsorship from that. There are, uh, to be thorough, several shows that are still available this year, unlike last year. So uh, those are available available for your consideration as well. And I have, um, I think you have this sheet, but I have an updated version, which has 
The other man will show you scratch that. Okay, what was our last year? What did we do? Did we do $5,000? Last year was a standard $5,000 event sponsorship. Um, and I'd like to encourage you to uh, consider doing that again. Um, let me just think for a moment if I have failed to say anything important. I want to congratulate you all on doing an excellent job of uh, Thank you. bringing beautiful performances to Brownsville. We just Definitely need for, for this area. Um, do you have any questions? Oscar? I would the mayor's not here, but I was gonna um, I was gonna point out that uh, one of the shows that's still available is the Lena Downs event. And uh, most a, a large number of people that I know, I don't know how it could be this many people, have told me that they first heard Lena Downs in a bar in Oaxaca when they went to Tony's wedding. So um, the mayor may have some interest in that show. Uh, I don't know how um, as many people have told me that could possibly fit in that bar. <laughs> uh, I wonder if people have uh, adopted that story because it sounds good rather than they uh, imagine that they were there. But, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll uh, leave that to you. Uh, whatever you decide is, uh, is great with us. If, it, if you can't do it every year, and, uh, I, will, you know, I will come back to you every year. We, we appreciate what support we can get. Thank you very much. Standard. The motion is for the standard uh, sponsor package of 5000 uh, Is there a second? Second. Second. Carmen Vasquez. Any questions? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. you can just let me know which one. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Item number four, uh, Leandro Garcia, investment report. Yes, I'll be very brief with this report. Our um, investment portfolio totaling 167 uh, million, um, pretty much consisted of five major categories: securities, bank deposits, investment pool and money markets, CDs, and, and our money market fund. Uh, our distribution uh, for those uh, five categories: uh, 28 million. Uh, 582 in agencies, uh, yielding uh, a range from 51 to 113. Um, our Wells Fargo account uh, for our earnings credit rate earns uh, 1%. And then we had our investment pools, uh, 91 million, averaging a 12, uh, 13, and, and the, the, the component that contains uh, CP 37 basis points. Our CDs, uh, 3.9 million, uh, 48, 49 basis points there in the morning, money market. Uh, a low six and 13. Uh, overall, I mean uh, 17 and 18. Overall, our yield was uh, 38 basis points. Um, our distribution of, of those five categories uh, is presented here in this pie chart, mainly uh, the biggest portion of investment pools. When compared to the S&P uh, Government Investment Pool Index, um, the, the blue line uh, way down below, uh, we do exceed it, uh, 0 0.06 versus 38 as of June. And then we also threw in a, a comparison to the 91-day uh, T-bill uh, for the quarters ending December, March, and June. As of June, uh, our 38 compared favorably to that 91-day T-bill of nine basis points. That concludes my presentation. I'll answer any questions. And this is a, a no action. Item number five. Yes, uh, Amendment Number 10 provides funding for uh, our fire hydrant uh, replacement project that is uh, soon to uh, to be to commence, uh, and uh, we are recommending uh, funding of 1.3 million from prior year surplus funds. Uh, we are uh, uh, confident that these monies will be spent within the next 12 months. Uh, in two phases of, of fire hydrant activity. We do have a related item, number 13, for part of the first phase uh, that will come later in the, in the agenda. But uh, we, we, uh, we opted to, to fully fund this at this point, at least to seek full funding from the board um, in anticipation of the activity that, that will get underway here. Any questions? <coughs> 
motions to approve the DOB staff recommendation. Second. Second, Mr. Vasquez. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item six, Mr. Garcia. Uh, consideration approval of amendment number 11 for the fiscal year 2012 capital improvement plan budget. I am uh, number 11, amendment number 11, uh, six funding of 280850 for two, two projects. The first uh, is to supplement uh, what was previously funded for the North and South Colonias. We had a $500,000 budget. Uh, we are seeking uh, additional funding of 185850 to complete the, uh, uh, the, uh, the work associated with, with, with those projects, primarily easement-related uh, uh, engineering services. We also uh, are requesting uh, 95000 for uh, utility improvements on West Jefferson Street, uh, which are also, both of these are also uh, uh, provided in separate agenda items for specific approval to the projects. So the total of 280850 850 as amendment 11 is what uh, we're seeking here for approval. Motion, Mr. Vasquez, for staff recommendation. Second, Mr. Nakeda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7, Mr. Garcia. Consideration approval of a resolution by the DUB for the City of Brownsville, Texas, consenting to the issuance of water supply contract revenue refunding bonds by South Coast Regional Water Authority, recommending the City of Brownsville, Texas, to authorize the issuance of water supply contract revenue refunding bonds by South Coast Regional Water Authority and other matters in connection therewith. Yes, our financial advisor, Santa Cruz and Bond Council, uh, Fulbright and Jaworski, are proceeding with the refunding of, of um, 14990000 in bonds with new bonds of 13800000 We have presented this to the South Coast Board, to the City Commission, had our first reading approved last Tuesday. Uh, we are in a favorable uh, uh, position with the market at this time. Uh, we anticipate achieving about 11.3% uh, in savings or net present value savings of 1.7 million. Uh, so we are uh, seeking uh, the board's uh, authorization of this resolution. Any questions? Motion for staff recommendation, Mr. Nakeda. Second, Mr. Garcia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item eight, Mr. Garcia. Item eight, uh, six approval for annual supply of electric inventory. We do have um, uh, 12 items that uh, will require casting of lots here, and then I'll, I'll let Diane read the specific vendors that she has uh, recommended for for use. Okay, we took open bids for the annual supply of electric inventory material, and we have casting of lots of several items. So uh, the first item is item number 52 to either Wesco or HD Supply. HD Supply. HD Supply. Okay. Item 65 to Wesco or HD Supply. HD Supply. Item 69 to Wesco or HD Supply. Item 70 to Wesco or HD Supply. <laughs> Item 72. <laughs> Item 72 is to Stuart C. Irby or HD Supply. Stuart C. Irby. Item 84 to Wesco or HD Supply. Wesco. Item 85 to Wesco or HD Supply. That was 85. Oh, oh no. No, that was 84. Okay. 
West Coast. Item 86 to Wesco or HD Supply. Wesco Distribution. Mm -hmm. Item 88 to Wesco or HD Supply. Item 89 to Wesco or HD. Wesco. Item 91 to Wesco or HD Supply. Wesco. Item 163 to Stewart C. Irving, Texas Electric Co-op or Priester Mellon Nicholson. Okay, so PUB staff recommends approval of bid award for the annual supply of electrical inventory material to the low bidders meeting specifications as follows. Tech line of San Antonio in the amount of $95,713.50. Wesco distribution of San Antonio in the amount of $129,092.70. Stewart C. Irby of San Antonio in the amount of $31,158.20. Spectrum Power Products of Bath, Pennsylvania in the amount of $4,792.50. HD Supply of San Antonio, Texas in the amount of $53,284.21. Texas Electric Co-op of Georgetown, Texas in the amount of $24,878.90. Priester Mellon Nicholson of San Antonio in the amount of $49,000. $2,003.95, Sun Enterprises of Blanco, Texas in the amount of $42,519, plus the casting of lots in the amount of $3,460.50, for a grand total amount not to exceed $434,103.46. So move motion by Mr. Nakab. Second. Second Mr. Garcia. Questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Garcia. Item number nine. This is consideration and approval to, for the annual supply of electric meters, fixtures, and lamps. Uh, the purchasing department opened bids on July 12th. Um, we sent out to eight vendors and nine responded. Um, one of the vendors picked up the specs uh, from the internet. So PUB staff uh, recommends approval of the bid award for the annual supply of electric meters, fixtures, and lamps to the low bidders meeting specifications as follows. Border States of Brownsville in the amount of $212,800.90. Stewart C. Irby of San Antonio in the amount of $135,076.80. Wesco Distribution of San Antonio in the amount of $78,234.04. Texas Electric Co-op of Georgetown in the amount of $108. HD Supply of San Antonio in the amount of $164.04 and International Lighting Corporation of Hammond, Indiana in the amount of $1,307.52 for a grand total amount not to exceed $427,691.30. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Yes, this is uh, for consideration of approval of a rebid for annual janitorial services. Uh, staff went out um, uh, to solicit uh, uh, bids for, for janitorial services, sent out the, the uh, invitation to 12 vendors, and seven vendors responded. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, staff is recommending uh, Nunez Cleaning Services uh, for a grant total not to exceed 70000 to 1992 our current vendor is uh, USC, UCS United Cleaning Service, and we have attached uh, some, some information regarding the, the process and the uh, some evaluation criteria of the current custodian. Any questions? I do have a question. question. Yes, uh, it was a big process, right? Yes, we went out with, with uh, specifics on the locations and the uh, had walkthroughs and 
Right. And the, uh, the recommendation is to award the contract to the most responsible bidder. Are you going for responsibility or are you going for a no bid? We are, we are basing it on both because we did get favorable uh, uh, referrals on the recommended uh, provider. Uh, we, we did uh, went out and, and did some referral uh, uh, validating or checking. And, and uh, there is an uh, extensive, um, there's a matrix that uh, begins, I believe, on page 30 that, that captured some of the, uh, the, the recommended vendors, current uh, clients. You want to you recap the overall summary of the response? Doing yes, it's been recommended, and like I say we've gotten very favorable responses. So it's a combination of of the price, which is seventy thousand, and the favorable responses, as well as what the the, uh, the provider is currently uh, performing, how they perform for him at this point, because he is, or that company is, is uh, servicing some of the facilities at this point. What was it? What is the lack of signatures? I'm Gaza and Jerry. Mm -hmm. We require that every submittal for authenticity be signed by representative. That that's common on all submittals. Uh, if, if we accept a blank, uh, then then we get into potential disputes and who submitted it and whatever. We have it in two places in so. the bid document. It's in the upfront spec, and then on the signing page, we also have where they're supposed to sign it. We have it in bold letters that they need to sign. It's, the it's document. a clear requirement that's specified. And, and we cannot waver from it. Uh, I don't understand that. Can we get two levels of the signature? In a rush or, 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 I mean, we can't speculate, but something occurred in the last uh, minute that they, 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 you know. Somebody may have filled something. in the prices for them, and then uh, they just turn it over, and the person just maybe read the prices and didn't sign it. I don't know. It doesn't say why they didn't sign it. Now that has occurred in other bids also in today's meeting uh, or packet where some vendors just failed to authenticate some mail. And the next question I have is that it states from the report of the Soviet staff that uh, UCS has been working for four years, correct? And for the last two or three years they have gone satisfied to work. Is there documentation to back that up? The whole I saw was uh, July 2012. I got uh, emails here that were sent to Hector uh, since 2009 to current that emails going back and forth from the end users to Hector. That was my question. So you have documentation here. Yes, I have a question. Oh, my question. So here again, our recommendation is um, an award for general services to Nunez Cleaning Services of Brownsville for a total not to exceed seventy thousand two nineteen ninety two cents. Motion, Mr. Garcia. Was it Brownsville? Yes, um, after a low vendor uh, response, uh, previously we, we uh, the board opted to rebid uh, the work for annual contract for car concrete work. Uh, we did uh, uh, release a, a rebid, uh, send it out to 13 vendors, and four responded. Um, the, we do have uh, the attachment to comparing the, uh, the prices submitted. The, 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 the recommended vendor is GP7 Construction. Uh, with the prices uh, listed out of 650 for a driveway, $4 for sidewalk, 850 for curb and gutter, 10 for saw cutting, 650 for valley gutter, and $100, which we are not at this point uh, opting to, to, to incorporate in the, in the agreement uh, for a total of 164,238. Um, we, we did achieve uh, somewhat more favorable pricing than the first round uh, from the initial vendor, so. Uh, we are recommending uh, GP7 construction. Any questions? <coughs> so 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia, any questions? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, thank you. 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 Thank Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this is a presentation by Frisa Nichols of their findings from uh, phase one of the filter rehab project for work plan number one and number two. We have Mr. Ray Longoria and Gary, Mr. Gary Smith from Frisa Nichols that will be presenting the, they're, they're going to be summarizing the report and outlining their findings and recommendations. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chair and board members. Uh, my name is Gary Smith. I'm with Friesen Nichols. I'm pleased to be here tonight to present the findings and recommendations from the uh, filter system rehabilitation study that we've been conducting for y'all. We'll jump. We'll jump right into the findings first. Um, First of all, uh, we did not find any problems with compliance with, with drinking water standards. Your, your water is consistently met drinking water standards. There's, there's really no issue there. The issue has to do with the, with the age of the infrastructure, really. Uh, your filters range in age anywhere from, from 40 to, to 80 years. The original filters that were built at Plant 1 are 80 years old. Uh, there, there have been projects over the course of time to, to rehabilitate them, but it's, uh, it's really time to look at a more comprehensive look at them. Uh, the filters do not meet the current TCDQ design criteria for, the, for media depth. Uh, in, in the course of rehabilitating the filters, that will be something that we need to, need to address. But the, the backwash system is really the, the primary concern. It's, it's, uh, it's not really very effective or efficient. There are uh, problems with the, the structure of the filters, the, uh, the under drains and the filter media themselves, the filter media itself have, have, have been disrupted over time or, and uh, they need to be replaced. So we're recommending a comprehensive renovation of the filters so that you can continue to produce acceptable drinking water quality in the future. After evaluating the filters, uh, we evaluated two alternatives for renovating the filters. Uh, the first one was an air scour water backwash system. Um, just briefly, uh, the normal flow through a filter is, is from the top to the bottom, down through the filter, but as the filter accumulates solids in it, eventually those solids have to be washed out or they'll break through and, and cause uh, compliance problems with, with effluent turbidity. So the, the, fil the air scour water backwash system uses an air scour where, hours, where air is introduced into the bottom of the filter and is able to loosen solids from the, from the entire depth of the filter as the, as the air is on. The air is, is then turned off, a water backwash comes on, and that's what actually flushes the solids out of the system after, after the air has had a chance to, to break them loose. The other type of system that we evaluated is, is uh, very similar to what you have now. It's a surface wash system with a water backwash. If you look uh, carefully at that picture on the right, you can see a, a, a metal arm uh, down below the water level that's connected to the, uh, the pipe that's coming up. Um, in, in surface wash, the water is introduced through the, through the nozzles in the surface wash sweeps, which rotate. And, and break up the top part of the filter, which, which is in fact where the majority of the, of the solids do accumulate, the solids accumulate throughout the filter also. So after, in, the, in, in the process of backwashing, the surface wash is turned on first, he said it breaks up the top part of the filter, then the water backwash is turned on to flush as many solids out of the filter as you can. In comparing the cost of the two systems, the, uh, the construction cost of the air scour water backwash system is, is clearly higher than the, uh, the surface wash water backwash system. 
We also looked at the uh, annual operation cost. There, there are advantages of the air scour system in, in terms of the uh, using less backwash waters. There's less water to retreat and, and, and bring back through the plant. Um, and, and, and also power costs associated with that. So we, we took the annual operating cost and the, did a present worth analysis of those operation costs. And the total present worth of the two systems is, is really, it, at this level of estimating, is pretty much a wash. The, uh, alter, the alternative number one, the air scour system, is a little bit higher in present worth. But uh, as I said, at, the, at this level of estimating, they're, they're really very close. We recommend a comprehensive renovation of the, fil of the filter system, which would include replacing the filter under drains, which we would do in either alternative. But we recommend that the air water backwash system be implemented because it had its superior backwashing characteristics and because of some of the savings you'll have in the operation cost. Uh, we're also recommending that the media depth be increased to comply with TCEQ, TCEQ requirements, which will, will be a benefit in the long run as well. The reasons for our recommendation are improved backwash efficiency, less backwash water will be used, uh, lower power requirement, this, this is the state-of-the-art and gravity media filter technology. Uh, most plants who are renovating filters are, are going to this instead of staying with the older technology. And uh, but last but not least, uh, our, our recommendation will correct a number of filler issues that were, were found over the course of the study and, and make these filters in good shape for years to come. And an issue that uh, we've discussed over the course of the project is the budget for the project. Uh, the total project cost uh, we estimate to be 5.4 million, which includes the 4.5 million construction cost, plus 20% uh, for administration, engineering, and other, other project costs. Uh, PUB had budgeted uh, 2.32 million for the project, so uh, We've, we've talked a lot about the implementation and whether this will be implemented as one project or will it require phasing into several projects. And we, we took a look at a, three phasing options, actually. What, uh, one would, would do this all in one contract, which is a desirable way to go. That way both plants will be will match. And, you know, there won't be any training issues from plant to plant. If, a, if an operator goes from one plant to the other, you should understand that one as easily as, as the one he came from. It can be divided into two construction contracts, which would not quite get you to the $2.23 million budget. In order to actually achieve that, you'd have to divide it up into four construction contracts and, and to be below $2.3 million. So that is, that is one issue that is, has yet to be addressed is the implementation of the project. And that's the uh, end of the presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm curious, as far as the debt that you were talking about, can you even have TC, TC standards? Right. What are you going from? What are you uh, we're going from uh, Current media depth is about 24 inches to about 32 inches. It's not a drastic change. It's a, it, it's a, it has to do with what they call the L over D ratio. To, to, meet, to meet the requirement of TCEQ for the L over D ratio, we have to have a deeper media. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> L over D is the, is the depth of the media divided by the, the diameter of the media. And the, and the TCEQ requires a minimum of 1,000, which your current media configuration won't quite get to, but the, the media configuration we're recommending will be, will be over 1,000. In your studies, have you seen these before as far as 80-year-old filters? Pardon me? 80-year-old filters? Have you seen 80-year-old filters Oh, yes. Before? Oh, yes. I've, I've seen quite a few 80-year-old filters and operated a few of them myself. <laughs> how, how long are those filters supposed to last? Or like? Well, the structure of the filters, you know, should last 
but for a long, long time. The, the, the issue is really the under drains. Um, you know, the under drains over time, uh, sand works its way down into the under drains and begins to build up. And eventually you wind up with a situation where part of the under drains are full of sand and they really aren't functioning like they're supposed to function, either in the, in the filtering mode or in the backwash mode. And, the, and, and that's where you are on your under drains and filters. Will that, uh, will that affect the, the taste or the, how you can improve on the taste? It, it, it will have no effect on taste, really. This is, this is to ensure that you'll be meeting the uh, drinking water regulations for effluent turbidity. Any questions? Or oh, has well, you asked part of it. Was taste and odor, so I guess you answered the question. Yeah, there, there will be no effect on taste and odor by this project. Well, the quality of the water is, is, is very good. Um, we, I don't think we're going to improve on it a lot, but, I, but what, what I feel is that we're going to ensure that you're still going to be able to deliver that quality for a long, long time. Um, frankly, at plant two, you're, you're probably lucky you are meeting the requirements. It's got some pretty severe problems as far as the, the under drains and and uh, media washing out of the filters so that typically the media at plant two is, is, is a lot shallower than, than it really should be, but, but you're still meeting the requirements. Partially because they, they're operating that plant a little bit below capacity because of the requirement. Can you go back to that cost summary? And what, that what I was going to say is uh, we, we, we do have in place at this point uh, about $2.8 million to, to fully fund the whole 5.4. Uh, we would come back with an option of funding the remaining uh, 2.6. Uh, I think, uh, I know it's a no action, but, but to give some guidance on one contract to contract, uh, we would probably offer the one contract I remember, uh, it's been a while since we met and since you started all this, uh, but what, what about, uh, did you do anything to improve the taste? I mean, uh, what, what, what uh, you know, what other options we would have to improve the quality of the water and the sense of taste and smell? Uh, I know you said the quality is excellent, but it doesn't taste like it. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mean to. Nobody is going to argue that taste and odor are the two most subjective things about, you know, for drinking water customers. Um, I think that's really a, that's, that's really a subject of another study, frankly. I mean, it really needs to be looked at by itself. So it wasn't looked at in this? No, it was not. It was not part of this particular study. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Do you have any other questions? I have a question. I mean, how long will the solution allow TV to meet uh, current and or future, the foreseeable future of TCEQ requirements? Because they do change, obviously. And so, how long will this solution be? I would get another, you know, 40 or 50 years. No reason to think you wouldn't. And what would it take for us to add to scope, taste, and odor? Just add it to your scope? Just add it. <laughs> That's all it so because I remember we were back here, what, about three months, six months ago, uh, when they originally presented, and that was one of the key issues with, uh, with, with, with our water, frankly. Uh, and so we're not going to have to touch this for another 40, 50 years. This is something that we really well, need to do. Well, I mean, regardless, I mean, we have an opportunity to do something about taking <coughs> We might have to take that opportunity and at least look at uh, what the cost of those options would be and, and make that part of your Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number 13. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is a approval of consideration and approval of engineering service contract for the development and preparation of bid documents for uh, the fire hydrant replacement contract. 
if you remember last year um, the fire hydrant survey was conducted for over 4,000 fire hydrants in the distribution system uh, 336 fire hydrants uh, came back as uh, not operable and uh, we've been working on the fire hydrants and so far we have 185 that need to be replaced we've been working with Ambiotech uh, they're putting together specifications and big documents to procure a construction service contractor to come and replace the, the hydrants. They have submitted a negotiated engineering fee of $72,830 for the first phase, which is 80 fire hydrants. Uh, we are estimating a lower cost for both engineering and construction for the second phase, and we're recommending approval of an engineering service contract with Ambiotech um, for the preparation of the bid, uh, bid specifications and contract documents for the first phase for the fire hydrant uh, contract for an amount not to exceed of $72,830. Any questions? Consideration approval for amendment number six of the extended professional services related to Atkins North America, formerly uh, PBS and J, for the ERA projects for contract number one, five, and eight, which is the Resaca Boulevard, Boca Chica Boulevard, and Old Port Isabel Road. Um, so far, as of uh, June 29, 2009, the board approved a resolution for the engineering services and for contracts one, four, five, and eight for an amount of 1766736 We have done amendments one through five um, for geotechnical services and additional construction phases. And right now we are requesting the amendment number five for an amount of $60,000. This will extend the contract up to February 2013, and we're recommending approval of Amendment Number Six for an amount of sixty thousand dollars. Motion to accept the recommendation. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 15 is voted. Okay, this is a consideration approval for team order number eight, uh, another ERA project. This is for construction contract number two, which is East 6th and 7th Street. This is for two additional bores for, uh, for an 18-inch gravity sewer line on East uh, 7th and in Washington and East 7th and Elizabeth Streets. And uh, the bores will eliminate the need to open cut these uh, intersections and will minimize the disruption of the business downtown area. So change order number eight results in an increase of $150,876.32, which is uh, a total of 15.49% uh, for change orders one to eight of the original contract price. Staff recommends approval of change order number eight for an amount of $150,876.32. Second. Second, Mr. Huskis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Item 16. We're going to be tabling this item. If I yes. might, Judge Chairman. Yes. Uh, since I would like to withdraw this motion, given that the agenda has been adopted, I would suggest that you ask the members of the commission at the, the board this time whether there's any objection to the withdrawal. Okay. Is there an objection? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Okay, we'll table the item, item 16, right? Yes. All withdrawing or table? Table. Withdrawing. Withdrawing. Oh, it's withdrawing. Okay. The difference is, we you didn't move the table, you'd have to bring it back on a motion to reconsider, motion to amend that reconsideration, and then a motion to adopt the motion as amended, as opposed to just no objection to the withdrawal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 17, Mr. McCann. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. PB does not have an arc flash protection policy in place at this time. The purpose of this policy being proposed is to establish written guidelines for the use of arc flash protection materials. The guidelines emphasize the requirements of fire retardation, clothing, and personal protective equipment needed for employees that work with energized equipment, which is anything 50 volts and above. Questions? Motion is not going to go staff recommendation. Second, Mr. Garcia. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Item 18, Mr. McCann. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. House Bill 2295 was signed into law in 1997. This requires that utilities with underground facilities in the state of Texas join a notification center in which excavators call in advance before digging. Upon notification, utility companies are required to mark the ground of any facilities inside the digging zone within two days. In the past, PUB has elected to hire contractors to perform these duties, and this is a consideration and approval to either approve or reject the single bid from USIC. Um, you can note that USIC is the uh, number one utility locator in the country. They represent about 90% of all uh, underground, all utilities with underground facilities, both electric and communications. Any questions? Yes, what are we pressing out? This is a company that we have in place at this time. Uh, the proposed uh, item is about a 5% increase over previous uh, cost. Would you recommend, I mean, I guess you have given the option to reject or rebid, right? Yes, sir, and this is again due to the circumstances of having just a long bidder, but we would wish that we go ahead. We, we, we do most of the work in the valley for every utility. This one company is kind of open. We have received an interest from eight firms, but here again, like Mr. McCann said, unfortunately. One of the things Diane just noted is that in the past uh, there were other companies available, but they've merged into this one company, so there's not too many choices available now. Any other questions? Motion staff recommendation, which is to what? Accept the bid. Accept the bid. Well, it's accept the USIC. Yeah. The motion is to accept the USIC is. As there be a locating services. Okay. Same kind of Mr. Vasquez. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 19. 19. An upgrade of the Silas Ray Power Plant Distributed Control System has been prompted due to equipment obsolescence and support issues from the existing control companies. <clears throat> as well as limits in the historical data logging and programming capabilities which limit technical troubleshooting. Uh, we're also not fully compliant uh, with uh, ERCOT and this would make us so. However, the bids received were not compliant with our requirements and we are asking that they be rejected at this time. Motion to go a staff recommendation. But Second, Mr. Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Item 20, Mr. Item 20, August the 8th of last year, the board approved an overhaul of the Silas Ray power plant. Uh, we budgeted $4.5 million. Construction has been complete. However, there's been an overrun of $110,913.34 for our accounting department. At this time, we recommend the final payment uh, be made and the project closed out. Any questions? Is there a motion? Minus, uh, what was the overcharge? The overcharge was a combination of, of events. Uh, as we went into the rebuilding of the unit, uh, we ran into problems on a time schedule 
due to faults in the uh, generator that were found after the unit was disassembled. Uh, due to this, repairs had to be made, uh, cranes had to stay on site while this was going on, and it was a combination of events. So the total cost was four and a half million? The proposed cost was four and a half million. We went over 110,000, 100 and almost 11,000. So that's about two and a half percent. Because of unforeseen things that you found once you opened up the Yes, and that's, that's always a risk, and it could just as easily have been $200,000 under, but that wasn't the case this time. Yes, sir. We have a discrepancy in the number. We have a 110,912.34 in the paragraph. Right. The 913 in the table and the 912 in the recommendation. So how much is code at 13? 913. Okay, so we... The motion should be to... to uh, Hundred and ten thousand nine hundred thirteen and thirty four cents. Sorry, I apologize for the cash late time. Is there a motion by Mr. Nakana? Second. Second, Mr. Vasquez. Any questions? Oh, all in favor? All right. Motion carries. Consent items? Are there any uh, questions on the consent items? Uh, is there a motion for uh, Approvals for the consent item. So moved with approval guidance. Motion by Mr. Roskis. Second. Second. All right, Mr. Garcia. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> Any public comments? No. Thank you very much for coming. And we need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Garcia. All in favor? Aye.